We're going to take a quick look at the 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV today. This is a new entry into Chevy's electric vehicle portfolio. It's not replacing the, Vol the Bolt EV. That's still going to be available and it was refreshed for 2022. This is in addition to it and it's slightly larger and offers a lot more options. But we're going to get to that in a minute when we do a walk around. The Bolt EUV is offered in uh, three different trims, although one's just for the launch, and that's called the Launch Edition, and it's available for $43,495. Moving forward, there'll be two versions of the Bolt EUV. The LT, which is starting, has a starting uh, MSRP of $33,995, and then the Bolt EUV Premier, which be begins pricing at $38,495. Chevy has aggressively priced these vehicles. It, it's actually cost less than the Bolt EV did up to this model year when Chevrolet also, with the introduction of the EUV and the refreshed Bolt EV, lowered the price of the Bolt EV by $5,000. So the Bolt EV is still $2,000 less than the EUV, but in our opinion, that $2,000 is well spent because you get a bigger vehicle, a lot more rear legroom, and the possibility to add a lot of options like GM Super Cruise, which we're going to be taking a look at when we do a quick drive. But first, we're going to do a walk around, go over some of the features, and then take you inside the Bolt AUV for a short drive. The Bolt AUV is available in seven exterior colors, but we only got to see four of them. We had infrared tin coat, bright blue metallic, summit white, and silver flare metallic on hand. Now I mentioned earlier that the Bolt EUV is available in three trim levels. The base level, LT, comes standard with Chevy Safety Assist, DC fast charging capability, wireless device charging, wireless Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, and a dual voltage charge cord. When you jump up to the premium version, you get leather appointed seats, adaptive cruise control, a rear camera mirror, and HD surround vision. The launch edition adds all that plus unique wheels and badging, super cruise, an illuminated charge port, and a panoramic sunroof. The interior of the bolts is completely refreshed. It's identical on both vehicles, and in my opinion, it's a big improvement over past years. There's a neat little storage cubby underneath the center console that I think owners are going to find useful. The Bolt EUV has an available panoramic sunroof. You can't order that on the regular Bolt EV, and it really opens up the interior. Now, the rear seating is one of the biggest improvements that the Bolt EUV has over the base Bolt EV. The vehicle is six inches longer, so you get about three inches more rear legroom. As you could see, I sat in the back, now I'm only five foot eight, but I have about six inches of free legroom. When I hopped into the Bolt, I set the seats in the same position. I only had somewhere about two inches of legroom, not nearly the same amount of legroom. The Bolt EUV also has a USB-C and USB-A charge port for rear passengers, and there's no longer a joystick. There's now push buttons for gear selectors. A power rear hatch is not optional on the Bolt EV or EUV, so it's manual. When you lift it up, there's this cargo cover here that you can easily pop off and remove. You then have this floor here that is hinged. On the Bolt EV, there's no hinge. This is just a, a, a piece that removes in one piece. This still does come out and you can reveal this lower storage area down here. Now, slide this back in, and there's a 60-40 sliding seats that you push forward, and they fold pretty much flat for a very large cargo area. The Bolt EUV is actually in the subcompact crossover or utility vehicle segment. It's not a big vehicle. I was trying to figure out what EV we could compare it to. Uh, and honestly, it's in between a Bolt and a Kona and a Nero. The Nero EV is actually a little bit bigger than the Bolt EUV. So it doesn't really have a direct 
competitor that you could say this is right up against like say the Bolt EV and the Kona EV are. They're, they're pretty much right up against each other. Um, so the, the, the Bolt EV has its own little segment. It has the same powertrain, the 200 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque uh, that the Bolt EV has. It only weighs about 90 pounds more, so it's gonna be a little bit slower. Uh, it has the same 65 kilowatt hour battery pack that's made uh, by LG Chem, and it's going to have a 250 mile EPA rated range. That's not official yet, but GM has done their internal testing and they're gonna submit their, their tests to the EPA and uh, you know nine times out of 10, it gets confirmed. The manufacturers always do that. A lot of people don't realize the EPA isn't the one that initially tests the vehicles. The manufacturers do their own internal testing. They provide all that data to the EPA and then the EPA either just accepts it at face value or they then take a vehicle and test it just to make sure that the manufacturer's information was correct. They don't test all electric vehicles. They kind of handpick the ones that they wanna do. So we're pretty comfortable that the 250 mile EPA range rating for the Bolt EV is where it will be coming in at. Uh, and that's only nine miles less than the Bolt EV. Uh, so, you know, it's, you, get, you take a very little uh, range penalty for having more usable interior space. And it makes a big difference in the back seats. The front seating is almost exactly the same. Uh, I, I just uh, uh, sat in the Bolt EV and came in here and it looks uh, nearly identical. Uh, everything feels the same. The seats, which are something that has been a point of contention for the Bolt EV since its introduction, and I was one of their um, uh, big uh, critics, I definitely, was not pleased with the Bolt EV seats. They've completely redesigned the seats and I'm happy to say these are better. I don't love them still. I'm actually a little disappointed. I thought that because Chevrolet knew that so many of their owners complained about the seats, they'd go out of their way to really make comfortable seats. And these are more supportive. Uh, they have very little lateral support. You can slide right off the side of the seat very easily. And uh, they're still narrow, like the old uh, seats were on the Bolt. Uh, I had kind of expected they'd make them a little bit wider, uh, and they're still kind of a little bit more narrow and not quite as supportive as I would like to see. But make no mistake, they're much better than the original Bolt seats, and I don't think this would be something that would make somebody say, oh, I don't want to get that car. And uh, you know, the, the original Bolt seats were that bad, in my opinion. I couldn't see myself driving in that vehicle all the time because uh, I found them very uncomfortable. The Bolt EUV is 6.2 inches longer than the Bolt EV and has more of a muscular exterior appearance. Uh, none of the exterior sheet metal is shared between the two vehicles. They're completely different vehicles, uh, although they, they absolutely share styling cues. They, you can tell that they're definitely uh, in the same family, but they, the, the Bolt EUV has a distinctive look, more muscular in my opinion, and it also has a uh, rear hatch that is much more angular than the Bolt EVs. The Bolt EVs rear glass kind of drops off very sharply on the back, from the back of the vehicle, like m many hatchbacks. The, EU, the Bolt EUV has a more of a tapered rear glass hatch uh, and it gives the back of the vehicle a totally different look than the Bolt EV, in my opinion. Driving the Bolt EUV feels very similar to driving a Bolt EV. And it should because these vehicles share most of the same components and powertrain. Uh, but when you get on onto the highway, there is one big difference in the Bolt EUV. You then have the option to buy Super Cruise, which this car is equipped with and we're going to put it on in a minute once the vehicle gives me the okay that Super Cruise can be enabled here. Now, the first thing you have to do is turn on the cruise control, the adaptive cruise control system, and then once you're in an area where Super Cruise can be initiated, uh, a little light is gonna light up to the right of the speed indicator and gonna tell you that you can, you can turn on Super Cruise. So we're cruising along right now at about 65 miles an hour on Route 287 South in New Jersey. 
in the Bolt EUV, and I have Super Cruise initiated. Uh, it seems to be doing a fine job. Uh, it's a hands-free uh, driver assistance system. There's a little camera here that's keeping an eye on me and monitoring what I'm doing. If I look away for too long or if I turn to look at the camera, um, it's going to start blinking uh, green and then it will disengage eventually. Now, one of the things, if you notice, I just put on the blinker, changed the lane, and now I can let go of the steering wheel again and Super Cruise will take over. Uh, the Bolt EUV does not have the lane changing feature that Cadillac offers, uh, but Super Cruise doesn't disengage. You put your blinker on and you turn into the other lane. And once you're centered into your new lane, Super Cruise will initiate again and you can let go of the steering wheel. It doesn't turn off and force you to turn it back on. It, it will remain on, but it lets you take over. Now we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna put on my blinker. I'm gonna come over to this lane here. I'm gonna center and let's see. Oh, I gotta turn off my blinker and there you go. And, and Super Cruise reinitiated and now it's, it's fully driving the vehicle again. So that's a nice feature. You don't have to turn it off and turn it back on when you're changing lanes. There's a new one pedal driving button on the center console and the Bolt EUV and Bolt EV retain the regen on demand paddle that you get on the left side of the steering wheel. These features combine to give both versions of the Bolt one of the best regenerative braking systems available today. Another perk Chevrolet is giving if you get a Bolt EUV is they'll install the charging outlet in your garage so you can use the level two charger that they provide with the vehicle. Uh, they'll cover the cost for a standard installation of a NEMA 1450 outlet and a 40 amp circuit breaker at your home. Now that's a standard installation. If your house has very complicated uh, electrical needs, if the circuit is, is gonna be a very long run, you might end up paying a little bit but they'll deduct the cost of the standard installation. It's a good perk, especially for those that are new to electric vehicles because it takes the guesswork out of it. You, you, when you're getting the electric vehicle, you don't have to say, well, what equipment do I need? Uh, who do I call to install it? Chevrolet will take care of all of that. They give you a dual voltage level one, level two charger uh, that you would then plug into the NEMA 1450 outlet that they install and it'll charge the vehicle at a rate of up to 7.7 .7, uh, kilowatts. That'll fully recharge the Bolt uh, EUV in somewhere around eight hours. Um, it depends on uh, uh, the conditions of the battery. If the battery is really cold, if it's really hot, charging slows down a little bit, but um, you can also upgrade and get a uh, more robust charger because the Bolt EUV and new Bolt EV can accept up to 11 kilowatts uh, on a level two charging station. So if you have one of those, a, a 48 amp charger or a 40 amp charger, uh, the Bolt EUV will charge even faster. But the supplied equipment that they give you is a 32 amp charger that will deliver 7.7 .7 kilowatts to the vehicle. The Bolt EUV has roof rails standard and it has a 2.9 inch longer wheelbase that gives the Bolt EUV 3.1 more inches of rear leg room than the Bolt EV. That's really the big difference in the vehicles, uh, the rear leg room. Uh, it has 16.3 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats. And with the rear seats down, it has 56.9 uh, cubic feet of space. Now, the odd thing about it is that's slightly less cubic space than the Bolt EV which is a smaller vehicle. So I asked uh, the Chevy representatives about that and why, why is that? And they said it's really the way the SAE measures the interior cargo dimensions and that this vehicle actually can fit more cargo than the Bolt EV can. But since they measure the, uh, the, the height of the rear hatch at the axle, uh, uh, the rear axle, that's where the, the, the roof of the Bolt EUV is at its lowest point. So it gets uh, not the proper height in the calculation. So uh, I have to take GM at their word that, uh, that you can actually fit more 
cargo in this space? It looks like you can because, the, I mean, after all, the vehicle is six inches longer. I, I don't understand why it would not have the same or more cargo space than the Bolt EV. But that's something interesting. If you're looking to, at the dimensions, the official dimensions, the Bolt EV actually has slightly less cargo space than the uh, Bolt EV does. You can also get a panoramic glass roof as an option on the Bolt EUV, and that's not available on the Bolt EV. This vehicle that I have here today on this media loan uh, has the panoramic glass roof, and I can tell you, it really opens up the interior of the cabin. It makes the car feel a lot more spacious. There's, there's a lot of room in here to begin with, but with the panoramic glass roof, it really seems to make the, the whole uh, cabin more open and airy and just gives you that, that feeling that you've got a lot more space in here. So far, I like what I see with the Bolt EUV. It just seems like it's a better Bolt, which was pretty good to start out with. It costs less, uh, it has more interior space, a lot more rear leg room. Uh, it's got the same power drain. It goes zero to 60 in seven seconds. It's a little bit slower than the Bolt EV, but after all, it's 90 pounds heavier. Uh, I think it looks nicer. It's got a more masculine uh, exterior appearance, in my opinion. Uh, I like the front refresh on the Bolt EV. I, th I think that vehicle's improved, but I kind of like the way the EUV looks a little bit better than that. Uh, I think this is going to serve families really well. It's, it comes in at an affordable price. It starts at only $33,995. Uh, uh, and, you know, at that price point, uh, if you can get a state incentive, some states offer state incentives, it's down below $30,000. And uh, you, there has been talk about uh, the new administration bringing back the federal tax credit for General Motors and also Tesla. If that happens, you could be sitting in this vehicle for about $25,000. Uh, that, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I, th I think if, if that does happen, uh, you know, Chevy's going to do really well with the EUV because I think it offers uh, a lot for families at a relatively in, in, inexpensive entry point. So while I really do love the Bolt EUV, there's two things where I think Chevy dropped the ball on. Uh, number one is they didn't improve the DC fast charge rate. The Bolt EUV and Bolt EV still have a 55 kilowatt DC fast charge rate limit. And that's just not on par with the electric vehicle offerings that are coming out today. Most electric vehicles today uh, have a 100 to 125 kilowatt DC fast charge rate at a minimum. So the Bolt is probably not the best EV choice. If you do a lot of long drives, hundreds of miles, if you like taking a lot of road trips, the Bolt EV probably isn't your best choice, but um, that's okay because a lot of people don't need to do that. There's a lot of people that very rarely drive more than 250 miles. And if you do once every month or two, you don't mind waiting a little bit longer at the DC fast charger. Uh, that's number one. The second point I'd like to make is, God, I think this vehicle would be so much better if it was an all wheel drive. People that are buying these crossovers and small compact SUVs, uh, are looking for all-wheel drive vehicles. Now, I know they don't always need them. Even if you live in a northern state with where you get a lot of snow and, and ice, uh, a front-wheel drive car is just fine if you put the proper tires on it. Uh, I always put snow tires on my vehicles. Even my all-wheel drive vehicles, they perform so much better in snow and ice with proper snow tires. So for those that are looking at the Bolt EUV and saying, geez, I would have gotten it, but it doesn't have all-wheel drive, you know what? Just put good winter tires on, on it, and this front wheel drive vehicle will be just fine in almost any winter driving condition. So that's it for our first take on the Bolt EUV. Um, hopefully we're gonna get a hold of one of these for an extended period of time to do a comprehensive review. We only had about two hours with this vehicle here today, and GM just told us that we're actually the first people outside of General Motors to actually drive the Bolt EUV, which is a good distinction. Uh, quite honestly, we came away very impressed with the Bolt EUV. Uh, I think it's a better deal than the Bolt EV. Uh, for only $2,000 more, you get uh, more utility in this vehicle, slightly less range. There's also more options you can order, like the panoramic glass sunroof that's not available in the Bolt EV. You can get the uh, Super Cruise option if you'd like. Uh, and 
It also comes with the level one, level two dual voltage charger, which the Bolt EV doesn't. It just comes with a 120 volt trickle charger. Chevrolet will also install the NEMA 1450 outlet at your home for free, standard until installation, of course, if you get the Bolt EUV. So when you start adding this up, the Bolt EUV seems like a better deal in our book. Uh, that's it for today's review. Uh, please don't forget, click that subscribe button, tap the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.